Okay, here we go. Hey, everybody. <laughs> We're still here. Here we are. Tuesday. Oh, well, this is the last Tuesday of April. It's Tuesday, April 26th. Um, so we're going to go over how to attach your card link to an email footer. I'm going to use my Yahoo account. So we'll, I mean, there can't be that big of a nuance in different kinds of accounts. Um, so we're going to go over that. Uh, we talked, I talked a little bit earlier to Guy today um, about the word of the week being empathy. And so we were going to, we had kind of an idea to talk about with that as well. Um, about uh, campaign specifically. And then ER, I don't, uh, he told me what y'all's topic was this week. What was y'all's topic? Our topic is tools. So the biggest thing is just implementing the tools that you have. And I think this rolls really well into what we're talking about for Tech Tuesday. Um, tool number one, right? We all send out emails on a daily basis. So why aren't we leveraging our digital business card or some landing page as a piece for our footer? And then uh, specifically to that, Kathy, um, being very uh, specific with your intended use, you could create a card that is your email footer card. It doesn't necessarily have to be your business card where you put in the link for your email footer. You could say, this is the intended use of this tool. So I know um, once you know the process of grabbing the link for the card and building out the email footer that Kathy's going to go through today, you can really be intentional about I want to I want to create a card that sits on my email footer and I've got a card that I use on my email footer personally and I get um, it's a campaign link uh, mm -hmm. because I send out tons of emails all the time right and the footers the same on all of them and uh, I get alerts all the time that people are looking at my business card from my email footer so it's a reminder to me that even the footer of your email is another opportunity to engage or interact with the people that you're emailing with. And likewise Absolutely. on all the areas of leveraging the tool. So theme of the week is tool. Where are all these places that you can use the tool at your disposal? And do you have the skill set and the knowledge to apply the use of that tool in those areas? Which is funny that you say that it's that's the topic because that's what made me think of using it for email. <laughs> I just yeah. described it backwards. That's all. I was like, oh yeah, we talked about that. That's how I came up with the topic. Um, and you know, so so a couple of things to what you just said is number one. So I, like I said, I do use emails for different things. I have email that I use specifically for my polka dot group, my networking group. I have specific email that I use personally. I have email, you know, different email address that I use uh, for little souls. So each one of those, to your point, has a different email footer, right? Goes to a different card that makes sense for that card yep. or for that email address. Um, the other way I use it, I actually, I was like, I actually made myself think the other day, I was like, this was really cool, is I used it when I was introducing um, you and Guy to somebody on email. And so I hyperlinked y'all's names yep. to your business card, which I was like, that's so smart because now you kind of made an even warmer introduction via email that this person can now go through the scroll, right? Who is this person? Let me look at their Facebook page or whatever. Well, and isn't that the case when we think about it? Like the traditional adage is, I'm going to do an email introduction. I'm going to CC everybody on that email. And I'm going to do like, Kathy, meet Ruben, Ruben, meet Kathy. And you know, the, the initial introduction, all you guys have is each other's email addresses. Kathy, to your point, it's a warmer introduction. If I said, same email, but instead of just saying Kathy meet Ruben, Ruben meet Kathy, I say Kathy meet Ruben and I put Ruben's name and I link Ruben's card that I have in my card index. Now I'm referring Kathy to Ruben truly and the same thing. So when she clicks on that link or he clicks on that link, it's going to pull up the profile, not just with the email address, but with whatever is on that person's card. Yeah, I, just, yeah, I, think, like... I think that that was really a really cool thought that you had, Kathy. And again, it's just sort of turning on those creative juices <laughs> in what you're doing, because you mentioned email footer. I recently updated my email footer to not just say, here's my digital business card, let's connect. But underneath that, I put a link that says, get your digital business card for free. And I put in my free card link. So now every time I'm sending an email, that's an exposure to somebody who one, may connect with me and, and view my digital business card, but two, may be encouraged to get their own free digital business card. And I don't make it a huge like banner at the bottom, but you could, you know? 
Uh, yeah. Just put up the footer just, however you choose. You just up to the game. I haven't even done that. <laughs> yeah, but I think the cool thing was in, in the hyperlink of the name is again, I mean, you could you could always just put the link in there. I just thought it looked so much cleaner and it was so unique that somebody's gonna go like, huh, that's interesting. Like I've never been introduced to somebody via email with a digital business card hyperlink to their name before. So well, um, we have to think have about like most most of the card providers out there, you know, you don't have their those other cards in your deck. It's very easy for you to make that introduction. You pull up your card index, you pull up the, the link, you grab that and you throw that in the email. Yep, absolutely. I I know for a fact that there's a whole lot of them that don't have a way to put yeah. your friends' cards wow. in your phone. Ruben, did you have a question before we do the? Yeah. yeah. Uh, er always mentions reduce the friction in the process, <clears throat> and what we're going to talk about now is something I haven't done and I really want to learn. But I just want to give you an experience. In Facebook Messenger, I received a, uh, a response that person had the other person there. In other words, she developed the group name between me, her, and this person and introducing us right in Messenger. Mm -hmm. So then I didn't know this person. So I was able to quickly go to Facebook and see if number one, they're married, they have a kid or whatever. So I know I'm dealing with someone. Then I sent them a digital invite card, shuffle card, so yeah. they can fill out. But what I'm saying is that the re she reduced that entire friction by having that she knew that person and then she introduced me by that platform yeah so I, what i want to do is basically do that same concept with Here. the email concept yep yep and also if you encounter stuff like that ruben a great it's a great opportunity to turn around and be inquisitive and ask hey how did you do that uh, I mean, that's exactly like what we do here. How did you do that? How did you create an email footer? How did you attach that other person into this Facebook Messenger? And there's a good chance if you ask somebody, they're freely going to give that information out. Oh, that was really easy. When I was sending you the instant message, I added an at sign with that person's name and it automatically populated them in. Or, you know, there's typically a quick way to do it. Um, and I think you bring up a valid a valid point, right? You get an email from somebody or you get information from people and you know they're going to take some action. If you can reduce that friction for the actions that you perceive uh, or anticipate they're going to take and make it easier for them, it's just going to raise your credibility that much more. And they're going to they're going to be like, wow, uh, Ruben had the foresight and the forethought to come in and and just link somebody's card to their name in this email recommendation or referral to me. And it made the experience so much better. Well, and that's exactly the same thing you're doing, you know, connecting a card to somebody, right? You're actually exactly. reducing the friction of having to figure out any extra information about them. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I don't, I think that there are times that we get overwhelmed with information, but I don't think offering information is ever a bad thing you know you can pick and choose if you're going to go down the rabbit hole yeah yeah so, all right so let's go let me pop over here and share my screen whoops i pressed the wrong thing hold on and Kathy, oh, while you're sharing i'll probably call out some tips that i'm seeing you do that may be um important to everybody else like one of the things that i'm sure kathy's going to have up yeah, is she's going to have her email up in one tab and you can see it already up there and she's going to have her shuffle account open in another tab. And you can see that up there as well. And so she's going to be working out of two tabs in her browser. Again, I, I think this is one of those things where I see people jump back and forth between browser windows by logging in and out of things. And it's like, no, you can have two windows or two tabs open at the same time. And that's going to help you do stuff. Um, typically, I do this, and three windows. <laughs> yeah, you know, I do this a lot, Kathy, when uh, when I'm even building my cards, mm -hmm. where I will have a tab open that might have a Google Doc where I've written out what I wanted to have for the copy, you know, uh, of the, the card. I might have my Dropbox or other things open where I might have images that I want to put on my card, or I might have my YouTube open where I want to grab the videos really quickly. Um, just just taking that little bit of setup action to prepare to take action on the building of the card or this in this case, the setting up of the uh, email footer before Kathy even goes into her email, she already has a card up or a card available that she's going to use. She's not going to start building her email footer without having that card available. So you can see 
Kathy's got a card here, my first card. It's got the business card info on there for Doug Baldwin, a quick little uh, blurb, contact information, et cetera. And she's like, ah, this is the card that I'm going to be using. You know, Then she might even take that step to go down like she's doing to campaigns here and create a campaign, create new campaign. And this campaign is gonna be her email footer, right? Yahoo email footer. And why is she doing a campaign? Because one, it's not going out to individuals, it's going out to everybody. Number two, she may even wanna do lead capture on here, but that's obviously an optional thing. Uh, number three, she wants to have some measurability. Like I said earlier, I just recently updated my footer to also include uh, a recommendation to a free business card. And uh, I still wanna measure all of that. How many people are opening up my email footer? You know, and it's it's few and far between based on the volume of email I send out, but it's still nice to know that it it's still getting impressions, it's still getting views, it's still getting you know uh, uh, visitors to to that card that are interacting with it. Well, the fun thing on mine, and I know you you like daily summary. I love individual. Is I leave mine on individual, and the bulk of email that I send because I'm not a big email person. But the bulk of email I send is right before I have an event for my mm. polka dot uh, networking group is I'll send a big email out to our members and I'll send a separate email out to our guests. And every time, hands down, I can pull them up because we just had one on Monday, email footer, email footer, email footer, email footer. And I'm like, I guarantee you, especially those guests are hitting that every time. Exactly, exactly. And so a good, a good uh, thing you bring up here in the campaigns, right? We're going to use a campaign link and we can set notifications for that campaign. And if you're new to this or haven't used campaigns much, there's a, I was talking with somebody about this earlier, Kathy. There's a difference between an individual notification and a daily summary. And you need to know that difference because in some cases, if you post a campaign link or let's say Kathy sends it out to an email list of 10,000 people or post this campaign link in a Facebook group with 100,000 members, you must be aware that you may get a lot of alerts immediately because it's first up in everybody's wall feed or everybody just opened that event email that you know um, Kathy sent out to everybody on the email list uh, that you might get overwhelmed. And that's something fun to be overwhelmed about, but overwhelmed with the number of individual alerts that you'd get from your posting. So we can switch it to daily summary, yep. which means it will just... tell you one time in 24 mm -hmm. hours at whatever hour you choose. So say I'm uh, you know, an afternoon person and at noon, I want it to tell me how many times has this been clicked on in the last 24 hours. Yep. And then I'll just get a one-time number. But I'm not like that. I like that. <laughs> That's the individual. <laughs> Um, the other thing, and we're not going to do it on this one, obviously, Kathy, but for lead capture, be aware that you have a separate notification for your mm -hmm. lead captures than you do on your campaign view. So as Kathy scrolls down, she can do notifications on the lead capture as well. So for me, I'm a daily summary on the campaign itself, but I'm a total individual notification on my lead capture because that's going to happen in real time. So for me, it's less about how many people are viewing this card of the campaign and more, oh, somebody just gave me a lead. I want to attack it immediately. So a good, a good rule of thumb, if you will, is individual notifications on your campaigns and your personal preference on, uh, I'm sorry, individual notifications on your leads and your personal preference on your campaign. Yep, absolutely. All right, so we're going to create this and then that's what I'm going to leave open um, mm -hmm. while I go over and work on email. Yep. So then I would come over to my email. And now, again, this is Yahoo. You guys probably, you know, Google, there's a million of them. Um, but it's some sort of a settings. It's going to be yep. under your email settings. And then here, it's going to be under more. I'm going to move everybody around. And this and is then, very similar to how it is on, on Gmail. I was just in there. And it's under settings, under the advanced settings. And you have a, a spot for the email footer. In this case, writing an email. And you can okay. see it's not your footer. So similar, similar, not exact, but similar. So look for your settings. And then here, like it's showing me here, here's my preview of my signature. And then all I did on this side where you actually set it 
was I, you know, I put my name, I wanted, here's how I wanted to lay out. I put the words, click here to view my biz, digital business card. Now on mine, I don't know what you do, ER, I put the whole sentence. I know you can just put the here, you know, you can choose exactly what you want to link. Well, and again, Ruben mentioned lowering the friction. If you just want something to click, make it as easy as possible to click. I mean, in my mind, underlining the whole sentence means anywhere they click on that sentence is going to open up your card. Underlining just here, you know, limits that real estate. So if you're if you're making it easy, I would just make the whole sentence it. Now, granted, you don't want to write a whole paragraph in your signature line and make that a hyperlink. It starts to lose its luster. Um, also be aware, like Kathy, in the scenario I said, you might have uh, click here to, to view my digital business card. And then you might have a separate link to say, like, click here to get a free business card for yourself, you know? And you don't want to make them seem like they're the same link. And so sometimes highlighting it all might make it seem like they're the same link. And so in that case, I might put, um, you know, the here itself underlined on that one. It's a little bit less subtle than them opening up my card, you know? Sure. So on, on so the card that we made that has, that goes to the business card, I would highlight that sentence. Yep. I would do the, um, the link and then I would go over here <laughs> to Oops, the other tab that series. you had open yep, grab the link, link come back to my email and I I'm not going to do it because this is my live email but I would paste it in there and hit save you can test it if you want to see where it goes and then I'd hit save so then I would oh. have that email and then to ER's point if I had another card that was built that I wanted to send them to my free account, right? So I actually, can I do that from here now, ER? I think I can. Yeah, if you hit the plus um, to your free, uh, the free business card. Uh, yeah. If you hit Where the plus I? sign, Kathy, on this one. I, I don't think I have one in there. We can build one real quick. Mobile oh, that's right. I was mobile. thinking the, I was thinking the links. That's what oh, I was thinking. The link. links aren't in here yet. Okay. Oh, here it is. Yep, look, shuffle promote free. Yeah. So we could do here. Now and this that would one send would them not to that be a campaign. Card. Yep. We could either grab that link if we don't care if it's a campaign. Yep. Or, or we once can again, a campaign for that card. Mm -hmm. And just like Kathy did earlier, hit campaign, create a new campaign, put in email footer. And again, the reason why we use different links is primarily for measurability. Okay, if you have this one card and you're only sharing out the same link, but you're sharing it out in a thousand places and you're getting a thousand customers, that's exciting. But if you realize of the thousand places you posted it, 99% of those customers came from one place, you'd, you'd want to know that so you can focus your energy on that one place and eliminate the 99 other places that you might be posting it at. So this one, I'm just going to add a sample. Um, this is one of the things Guy had talked about being empathetic to people um, in your lead capture title and re re realizing that not everyone's just going to give you information if you say, give me your information. <laughs> so yeah. one of the things I use a lot is like no spam, I promise. Or I'll tell people, um, hey, that just goes to me. I own this account. This does not go to my corporate office. And so you're not going to get stuck in any kind of email. Yeah, email list or, you know, drip or, or, you know, loop that you can't get out of. So here, I think I would just add, you know, on the free one, um, what's your, you know, uh, what I did is I said, have a question, contact me, no spam, I promise. So just first name, I didn't even ask for their last name, email, phone. That way I can, add, if they have a question on the free card, like, hey, is this really free? Yep. Uh, you know, can I really do this? Yeah, absolutely. So here we can copy that link. Back to email. Gonna highlight the here. Highlight yep. there. Or, you know, on this one, to your point, ER, to make it look different, I might say just the click here. Yep. You know, just make it a little bit different. Put that in and then hit well, save. Again, some of that breaking up of the hyperlinking makes it clearer to people that there are two links. Here, I'll put that one in there. I'm not emailing anybody right now. And then we'll. <laughs> We'll go back and see what that looks like. So then if we were to compose a message.
that it's already got my email footer, my name. Here's the link to that original business card that's about me. Here's the link to the one to get yours for free. Here you can see here the difference or just um, where the whole sentence is highlighted. And then here it's just the two words that I highlighted. And so that's how you link your email footer to your shuffle card. Yeah, it's, it's super duper uh, powerful, especially from that standpoint of just any chance you can get to have another engagement or interaction with a viewer is going to raise your credibility up in that no like and trust situation. It's just like another interaction and it's just more of the ability for them to discover more about you. Yep, absolutely. Um, and I think, again, if you're sharing information in an email, it may not be the information that's necessarily about you and in your card, right? So you're giving them the path to learn things that they may not even know. You know, for me on my gen general account, if I share um, my generic um, uh, business card, it talks about the different things that I do. So if I'm emailing you about one thing, you're going to learn about the other things that I have going on, um, which you know, people are always like, you have a lot going on. I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I think to your point, uh, Kathy, as well, and I'm thinking like Anna, uh, in an example for you where you deal with a lot of legal services, you know, maybe there's a tip that's in your signature line and it's not necessarily a business card, or maybe it's your business card and a tip. And that tip is going to a shuffle card that's like, the seven ways to protect yourself in any legal battle, or, or you, you know what, what I mean? And you've got a landing page you've built specifically for that. And it's another thing to say, am I engaging with people who are reading my emails, you know? Yep, absolutely. I mean, anything anything that we can do to, to share information and make us look like the, re, you know, the person who has the resources. Yep. It's funny, and, I was, and the faster you can get them to them, to those yes, resources. That's absolutely. The key. I was like talking to ask questions. If you do a lot of emailing and it's with a lot of customers, then maybe you want to put a FAQ thing in your footer. And it's like frequently asked questions, but you know, by my most beloved customers, and you link to that frequently asked questions card that you've created. And people mm -hmm. are like, oh wow, I did have that question. I was hesitating asking Anna directly, but by going down this path or clicking in her footer there, I'm able to discover that. Yeah. And I'm doing a, ser a series of uh, one to two minute tips for using a legal service plan. I'm going to actually do those uh, live, record them, save them, whatever. Yep. And I'll be posting those and posting links to them as well, just because video gets more attention. Agree. Agree. So I think that's one of those big things about when I say the use of the tool, You every time we're on a call like this, it's the different creative ways we can be in implementing the tool that we have at our disposal. Um, so I think about what am I using the tool for? Any type of digital business card. So ways I would then want to connect with people. Those are the ways I would post that link out. I would always keep in mind whether I'm posting to an individual or a group that tells me campaign or individual link. Um, otherwise, it's what landing pages am I using? You know. And again, there's an opportunity. There's almost an opportunity every time we put something viewable on the web we could attach a card as a link to that statement. You know, if you're commenting in a comment section in a group and you have relevant information on a landing page to that comment, you could link to that. Now, I would encourage you to not just have a random comment so you can post a link to legal services in a spot where it doesn't make sense, you know what I mean? But on the converse of that, it's, if I am participating in an environment where the audience would benefit from me connecting them to my information, then it would help me to uh, and serve me to go out and make that available to people. And it will help those people get access to that information, whether they engage with me or not. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ruben, you had a question or a statement? I was wondering, just briefly, could you do that same transaction, but using the Google rather than Yahoo to show us where the settings are? Let's do you, you want to pull up. yours up? Here? Yeah, let me see if I have my email up real quick. Give me a second, guys. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, 
So one of the things that yesterday I was, like I said, I had my meeting and I have a, a new user who's one of my friends who's sh just shaking her head. She's like, I cannot believe I've known you all these years and I've heard you talk about Shuffle and I never really thought about using it. And now she's doing a big show this weekend. And she's like, can I use this to collect, you know, people's information at the booth? And I'm like, yeah. And so she's dove into it for about the past month now. And she's like, yesterday she she gave me a shout out it was so funny she's like if you guys haven't connected with kathy she's way downplaying this whole shuffle thing <laughs> she's like i don't know why i haven't done this before and why i spent all this money to have a website built but she was just like i mean it's so funny how for me even like we just take for granted the power that we have in this shuffle app and then when other people see it um, it's it's fun to see it through fresh eyes again. <laughs> okay, so uh, Ruben, I pulled this up and I've actually got my example right here under my signature. In order to get here in your Gmail, and I'm logged into my personal Gmail, disregard that I've got 10,000 unread emails, um, or make a note that you're better off reaching out to me through IM and uh, text. Um, you click on settings. And when you click on settings, you're going to get a like short settings in the right hand panel and you'll click on see all settings. And the signature section is about, I don't know, maybe halfway down in all the available settings that Google has. And you'll see like my picture and then there's a section that calls your signature and it says my signature and similar to what Kathy was showing on the Yahoo side, you know, I put in my thanks. I put in my name. I put in my position. I put in some graphical logo. Again, depending on what you want your signature to look like, I put in the let's connect view my shuffle card. And that one is a hyperlink. And you can see I've got four separate hyperlinks in my email footer, right? I've got this one that's going to, you can see it. It's a campaign card for my card. And again, I can click on this so we can see it in a new tab. It's going to open up my card but I am measuring it as a email signature campaign. So I'm going to get an alert coming up about that. In addition on here, you'll see I have a link for my email address just to, if they want to click on my email address and email me back or something, they've got it there. The same thing on the um, website for LFI. And then, um, you know, what I might want to do is change this and make sure it's my you know, slash ER there. So again, some links are not cards, be aware of this, right? Some links are just the invite link or the referral link. And then I also put in the get your free digital business card one. And I've got a different campaign for that one that is going to the free card offer. So I hope that makes sense, Ruben. I'm going to jump back over. You're going to go into your settings, which is the gear icon in Gmail, right next to your name at the top. You're going to click on that. That's going to open up a little slide out. And at the at the top of that little slide out, it'll say view all settings. That's what will bring you to this settings menu. And then under the general all settings, about three quarters of the way down, you'll see signature line. And that's where you can put in my signature and you put in all that you want to display on the signature. Thank you. Oh, that's perfect. And of course, this is recorded, so I'll be able to look back at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, Here's the other thing. When all else fails, if it's outside of Shuffle and outside of LFI, other systems, Gmail, Facebook, your mobile device, a great, a, a, a great help is to just jump into YouTube and do a very targeted search, right? Updating my signature in Gmail, how to. And then the results, there's typically going to be dozens of videos of somebody you know, wanting to show you how to update your email footer. Um, does anybody else that, as you, keep keep going, Kathy? Go ahead. Oh no, does does anybody else use their links anywhere that we're not thinking of? I mean, where else do you guys link to, um, or put put links that you know besides email footers, besides um, social media? Is there anything like interesting and unique that you've done? I I will tell you guys something interesting. I have my box of thank you cards. And I typically will write thank yous out every now and then to people or send little one-offs uh, every now and then. And sometimes I will actually print out 
a QR code and stick it in there so that when they get that thank you, it becomes this interactive thing that they can scan to. And it might be going to my business card or it might be going somewhere else. But that's one area where, again, even if it's offline, even if it's traditional print, there might be an opportunity to leverage your card. Oh my gosh, you just gave me the best idea ever. <laughs> Good. That's it's what like this is all about. <laughs> right? I mean, think about it. Ruben understands. If anybody that has a group understands, right? I, I was just talking to my leadership team this week about how can we reach out to some people that we, you know, we haven't seen for a while and, you know, members that are just maybe a little inactive. And I was like, well, we could just do a postcard. It's so boring, you know, blah, blah, blah. We could do a quick little video that just like is the whole group going like, we miss you. And then stick that on a card all by itself. It's just a cute little 10 second video and pop that postcard with the QR code in it. And they'd be like, what is this? Dink. And then it would be, it would have a motion to it. And that's, and, and Kathy, that's what we're really talking about, right? When we are using technology, we're leveraging it to create experiences with the people we're interacting with. It's no different than, you know, Send Out Cards is an amazing company and it allows you to build a personalized card and send it to somebody. That's a lot different it. than getting an email. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, uh, the, the same thing here, creating some interactivity. And I've seen plenty of people use their LFI, you know, shuffle links on Send Out Cards, putting a QR on the back or things like that. And to your point, um, I know we did a project with a media company where they wanted interactive media. They wanted to have print. That was part of their big initiative, but they wanted that print to be in a way where whoever's interacting with it can scan elements within it and a training pops up or a video pops up to your point. And to have that be something that is, nobody's expecting the entire group to say, we, we miss you and we want you back you know, and put it on a card where it's like, click here to sign back up, or, you know, you can make it this experience for the person who's interacting with. It's so different than just opening up the card and just reading a little bit of text. Right. And just like, we that. miss you. Yep. <laughs> yep. No, I think that's a fantastic, I mean, that I was like, that would make it so much more personable. I love that idea. Love it. No, we <laughs> use um, send out cards for the nonprofit. We use that, um, and that's where I've used the QR code myself, sending that out to donors. So, yep. absolutely. Yep. Again, like, could be a great way to be like, hey, click here or, or scan this to donate, you know what I mean? Yep. And then it goes straight to your donation card, et cetera. Um, you know, it could be, uh, uh, thanks for purchasing the chocolate, scan this to save 10% off your next order, you know what I mean? All of that type of stuff could, could be another way to engage and uh, and bring in that person back to interact. Now, Greg, I'm looking at your uh, chat here. Would you be able yeah. to use the same link that's in the footer in a post on Facebook? Um, and it would it work the same way? Yeah, the link is going to be the link. The only thing I would caution against is you'd want to create a separate link for like a a separate campaign for Facebook. So that way you would get notifications. Ah, this business card's being viewed in Facebook. Ah, this business card's being viewed from somebody who just read my email. Okay. But if you're less worried about the tracking, any general campaign link can be shared through any way you would share, post, or hyperlink a link. And you can see Kathy just had yeah. up, like for and, any one of your cards, you can hyperlinks. create an unlimited number of campaign links. Yeah. So as long as you're willing to go through the extra 30 seconds it takes to proactively create a campaign link before you post it somewhere, that's the only conditioning that you have to get into the habit of is, oh, I'm going to post this link here. Do I already have a campaign link that would work for that? And I'm just reposting it or do I need to create something separate? And I mean, here's the reality. You can become so granular or anal about this that you say oh every time i post in a facebook group i'm going to create facebook campaign 425 and then when i post three days from now facebook campaign 427 and literally measure to the individual posting if you really want it to be that granular okay okay and as far as the uh hyperlinks in your in your email 
um, at the footer would, um, I just got a, a book, Fanatical Prospecting. Yep. And he spoke yep. about uh, hyperlinks um, causing the, the spam to mm. go off and, and not, you know, have it go through to spam when it gets sent. Sure. Is that, sure. Has that been a, been a problem? I think it depends. Obviously, the, every every platform from a delivery standpoint, whether that's text, whether that's email, whether that's social uh, media, whether that's uh, instant messaging, every one of those platforms is going to have a different algorithm that looks at the data you're posting and determines whether to serve it up, whether to recommend it, whether to filter it out, et cetera. And you really just want it to be relevant. You know what I mean? If, if, if your email subject line is buy now, and the only thing that's in your email is a link, then there's a good chance Yahoo email addresses are gonna see that and say, nah, you know, this is probably spam and put it in the spam box or, or block it. So you just, as long as it's relevant to the conversation and it's not overwhelming or overpowering to the overall content, you should be okay, Greg. Okay, okay. I would add on to that, that it also depends if you're looking to put it in a Facebook group, yep. what are the rules of the group, right? That's so true. like LFI insiders, you know, if somebody posts a link, we're going to go in there and the admins are going to check and make sure like, is this a shuffle link? Does this, um, does this make sense to be in insiders? There's a whole ton of groups out yep. there that are yep. owned by other people that don't allow links, whatever. So that's on the group rules. So always check that. No, that's a, that's a very good point. And, and play within the rules, right? We're not trying to do anything outside of that. But if the capability is there, you want to leverage everything within the boundaries uh, that you have, you know? Yeah, I was kind of laughing. There was a group that I'm in and it's a business group and it was like, you know, post your post your business Wednesday or whatever, you know? So it was there the day that you could post your information. They're like, post your digital business card. And then in parentheses, it said no links. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> what do you post a snapshot? Here's easily. a screenshot of what my link would take you to. I'm like, how am I, how am I supposed to post a digital business card with no link? <laughs> so funny. I screenshotted it. It was pretty funny though. I was like laughing. I was like, this person does not understand what a digital business card is. Talking about digital business card, the links actually, again, back to my meeting yesterday, so much, so many things happened yesterday. Um, I had a gal was like, oh, I'd love to learn more about your digital business card. I have one. And then she showed me what she has. And she goes, the only downside is that the person that um, receives it has to download the app. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I didn't even know that still existed. I was like, wow, I yeah. thought we were way past that. So I was like, yes, we, we definitely have something to talk about. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, about I think going back to the tool and the, the theme of this week with tool is really understanding what you have at your disposal and how you can proactively leverage it in the things that you're doing. Like proactively, we've now created an email signature that can now be, we've, we've done the work once. So if you spent the five minutes to set up your Yahoo, to set up your Gmail, to set up your um, at me, yeah. et cetera, you're now good to go. Every time you send an email, that footer is going to be working for you. Uh, likewise, if you're going to be in events this week, and we talked about this during Monday Sprint Planning yesterday, think about what you have coming up this week. Are you interacting with certain people that you're going to need to share information to? Maybe it's an updated brochure. Are you getting ready to go to an event? You want to go into that event already prepared. Does that mean you have your tap card? You already have your event campaign link assigned to that tap card. So that way, when you get to the event, you're just going in like thinking about your elevator pitch that's in your mind and not thinking about, oh, shoot, I have to spend the next five minutes before I get into this event, creating my card, creating a campaign, setting it to this tap card. Like just be a little bit proactive um, in your preparation on how you're going to use the solution and the different ways you have. So that way you can just go out and use it and you're not just doing it in the moment. Yep, 100%. I brought this back up just because of your point earlier. Like, So you can have one business card that has all these different campaigns. You just literally tell yourself, you know, this is going to go on my Facebook wall, like my actual Facebook page, not in my scroll, right? I yep. want to know who's gone to that. So then I just grab that link, copy it, put it on Facebook. Same card. Haven't gone, haven't done anything to the card. 
then I'm going to put it in my, my Instagram profile, then I'm going to put it in a connection group, then I'm going to put it on my tap card. Again, haven't done anything to the card, but I've made campaigns to tell myself, where is it and where, where is my lead gen coming from? Exactly. Like, again, going back to my example earlier, if Kathy has these eight different campaigns and she's posting them in eight different places and they all, let's say, have lead capture form and all of a sudden this card is generating tons of leads for Kathy, she would really want to know, is that coming in from my Yahoo email footer or from my Facebook page wall? Oh, no, it's all coming in from Instagram. Wow, I really need to lean into doing more posts of my card on Instagram because I seem to be getting a lot of traction. And I think this is one of those things that a lot of us as small business owners or solopreneurs or work at home professionals tend to overlook is we have to be smart about where we spend and use our time. And if we're, if we're trying to do everything that everybody says should be done in, in an effort to mark, market our business, we're going to run ourselves ragged trying to be in all of those places. Instead, for your business, for your skill set, for your product offering, find the audiences where you're getting traction and lean into those audiences until you have to, until you've maxed them out and have to find a new one, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I was just uh, actually talking to that same friend that, that just got shuffled about a month ago and she was saying how she showed it to a girl who's making a, it's like a coffee cart that can go to events. And I was like, you know, she could put a QR code on the cart. And then I leaned in on um, James's ideas. I was like, you know, she could put, maybe she's doing an event and it's been paid for, but she's, you know, she can collect tips and people yeah. are like, oh, I didn't bring cash. I'm like, oh, no problem. Here's my link to my Venmo, virtual tip you know? jar. Mm -hmm. yeah. Virtual tip jar. You got that. You've got testimonials. I was like, you know, have them snap a picture of them drinking their coffee. You know, send it. Hey, send this to my my link and I'll put you in a drawing for something. And she was just like, oh my gosh, where do you come up with these ideas? I'm like, you've got to come to our Tuesday trainings. <laughs> we all talk about this stuff and curate all these ideas. Hi, Shelly, what's up? Hey guys. And so one up from that is I use QR codes when I do vendor shows on all of my products. Yep. So if I'm selling an oil, it's got a vendor, it's got a QR code that links back to my website so they can buy more. I love 100%. it. 100%. I love it. And, you know, again, if, uh, if you start to think about it in terms of that and extrapolating that, if you really wanted to get crazy about it or fanatical about it, Shelly, you could literally create a separate one card for each product type. And it's like, oh, my oils, great. There's a QR code. It links back to my shopping cart, but specifically filtered for oils to make ordering or reordering your oil faster. You know what I mean? It also has my info. So I could talk about, it also has complimentary products listed underneath it with their links, et cetera. And again, I think that's so smart because what you've done is you've gotten it to a point where now it's you've reduced the friction for that person when they're running out and they're like, I've got to get more of this to get more of it. You know what I mean? And they always need your information. I, that, you know, when they go to run out, they've lost it between point A and point B. I used to sell a lot of other products and that was always the case. So I always labeled everything and they always, they would call me years later. Hey, I ran out of this. Do you still carry this? And I wasn't even a vendor for that anymore, but I could get it for them. So yeah, I mean, a good, a good example of this, like there's a reason why my garage door guy has a sticker right next to our garage door opener with his information on it. He didn't give me a business card. He put it right in the area where when I go and, and we just had like a spring break on the garage door, you know what I mean? Where I'm like, oh, I got to get that fixed. Who am I going to? Oh, I'm just going to call this guy. You know what I mean? He's already there. He's done the work before. Or likewise, HVAC servicing. You know, I see that there's a, there's, a there's a magnet, but it's a magnet that's stuck right on my heater so that I see it there. Again, this could be for anybody out there providing any type of service where there might be um, uh, reservicing or reordering to think about how you're going to offer them something that sticks around with that product or that service so that it's easily accessible for them to come back to you. All the time. And we should have like a whole brainstorm section on that. But uh, the plumber, have one on your hot water heater. Uh, the sprinkler guy who came out last week, I was telling him how he could put them on the little sprinkler boxes. Yep. Um, a lady, a friend of mine whose husband makes custom cabinetry, put one on the inside in case they ever have somebody say, hey, where'd you get those? Or you need service or you need more, like yep. everything, just everything. 
Um, Shelly, do you also do like um, ideas for recipe? I mean, I know there's so many like oil recipes that they could put together. Do you put those little tidbits and tips and tricks on there? I could, but I don't yeah. have that kind of time. <laughs> I figured it would save you time, like right at once. Oh, you need that? It's on the bottom. Oh, yeah. I think this is something that Anna brought up a few trainings than ago, all where we can almost all in a way step back and think about what are the common questions we get from our customers in our area of business? And we're all going to be unique to that, right? And then you think about like, what are, what is the typical questions that I've answered this week or this month? And how redundant have they been? And then I'm just going to put together a frequently asked questions card, or maybe it's little video snippets or something like that. And next time somebody asks me, I'll just fire that back to them instead of spending 15, 20, 30 minutes, an hour on the phone with them, reiterating the same thing every time. Yeah, 100%. How about a billboard next to the freeway that if they scan it, it goes right to a video of me telling them about essential oils. Sure, there absolutely. Let us know when you do that. We want a picture cameras up driving trying to scan and stuff like that but uh -huh. I, I see it all the time or text this number or call this number again we're just trying to be creative in and how we leverage this uh and the content for different types of advertising or engagement with our audience oh i saw i think i said this a couple of weeks ago i saw a qr code on a advertisement banner on the side of the road for i don't know somebody who's running for office here locally so i mean we don't we we finally don't have to explain qr codes that's all i have to say anything else any other cool ways you guys have seen them or used them or thought about using them or told somebody else how to use their link their card anything we else shirts that's what i was thinking it's like put do a and can i can you guys like tell me something maybe you should you probably know this when i blow them up or make them smaller sometimes they get like out of skew and then they don't scan what's up mm. with that so when you go to save your QR image, if you're saving it from your mobile device, yeah. at least on iPhone, it gives me an option of the resolution to save it as. And you might want to make sure you're saving as a max resolution with any image that you save anywhere. Doesn't matter whether it's a QR code or anything else. The moment you expand beyond the original resolution is the moment it starts to become very pixelated. Yeah. So you'll want to be aware of that. So when you're downloading your QR link, just make sure if you're going to be modifying or adjusting it or posting it somewhere, printing it somewhere, that the resolution is at the right format for your use. You're Thank better you. off always bigger resolution than smaller resolution. Like Android, so does that matter? It shouldn't matter, but uh, it should give you an option. I know when I like do some image stuff on my iPhone and I suspect that Android is similar is it will pop up like, do you want this 500 by 500, 250 by 250, or like original size? And I'll just grab original size if I'm not going to be posting it online, but I'm going to be printing it or expanding it. Or you can okay. just get an iPhone. <laughs> no, I don't buy anything. Sorry. I spend $300 on a phone, not $1,800. <laughs> now, how, uh, how would you get a QR code on onto a magnet would, would would a company that does something like that have to do that for you or so yeah there's most likely a bunch of services the same people who print banners i check with a print company online and you could say like magnets or ma print magnets and there's probably i mean vista prints probably one of them right um but i would recommend if you have a, a local small business that does that you could reach out to them and then they're going to have a template or a format because you're probably going to want to put some context around your QR code that lets them know what to do, right? Okay. And then so, you would grab the QR image and go out and do that. Yeah, Kathy's already found something just by Googling print business. You card can actually magnet. print them. So I've done this back in my days in Discovery Toys, back when I was in network marketing um, many, many moons ago. This was a thing that we used to do because we knew that our customers were going to come back to us wanting, um, so we sold educational kids toys. So we would always prompt them with, oh, you know, here, put this on your fridge. And if you tell them to put it on their fridge, they usually did. Because I had a ton of customers that would call me back and say, I'm so glad I put you on my fridge. And I'd say, oh yeah, you're going to want me for birthdays and Christmas and whatever. And when they get to certain ages and they have different things they need to learn in school. So you can print 
a magnet business cards at home, just in your regular printer, just realize that they're very thin. So they're, you're, it's not something that you're going to want to put like um, anywhere, you know, I don't know, on a car or something, you know, it's, it's, it's not the best magnet, but they're mm -hmm. perfect and they're beautiful and they work. So these I have used many, many times for many, many years. Cool. Okay. Cool. So definitely can print these at home and I'm sure you can get much better quality if you went to Staples or somewhere, but you can, there are ones that you can print at home. Where, uh, where would you get the magnet to print on? It's, it's on there. So it is a sheet of magnet business cards. So you and you stuff it in, in your you printer print them up just and like you would. Pop them yep. out. You and have then, to order that stock or that material, Greg, from like an online retailer. Yep. Okay. Or call your local, I don't know how big, if you have a big local staple, like a Staples or a Office Max, uh -huh. they usually carry them. Um, okay. But yeah, so that's why it's super thin. That's why I'm saying the magnet isn't like a huge magnet. No. But you run it through your printer and then you snap them all apart like you do business cards and then they oh. stick to each other in a big, huge pile. <laughs> <laughs> it was i mean it was for then that was a very unique thing because we were running around with all these magnet business cards that most people weren't yeah. gotcha and okay. then if you want to go bigger or like do the car side of your car type thing there's probably a print shop or a vendor out there that will do that and you just have to be prepared with your artwork to provide to them right whatever information you're going to have them print on there and i just think that anytime you have something physical in the real world it's a good opportunity to have a QR code on it. In today's world, like there's always, there's always one, never enough room to put everything you want to say on wherever size thing you have to say it. And you're better off being short and sweet in what you're posting and not clouding up all of that space, but then including that QR code where they can engage deeper. And if what you have to say piques their interest, they'll scan that as well. Yeah, I had my car uh, magnets made at Fast Signs. And Shelly says you can go to a place called the Teacher's Place and get rolls of peel and stick magnets. You want QR code earrings. That's what Shelly wants. I love it. Somebody walking up. I mean, look, um, uh, I've talked with uh, James a few times. He does a lot of, uh, uh, in addition to his other businesses, him and his wife have uh, the shirt embroidering and the t-shirt stuff. I've seen people walk around with, QR codes on t-shirts guys and they're walking around through the stores and they're actually getting scans and maybe it's people just I'm curious what does this guy have a QR code on his t-shirt for I want to see but it's another eyeball engagement to pique somebody's interest I think it's fantastic I think it's hilarious people do it too just out of curiosity this morning I was on a zoom with a bunch of doTERRA people and I could see them they were looking at it when I had had my screen off yep I could see them like playing with Scanning it, it. I saw awesome. one, um, uh, this was a World Series where somebody was sitting behind the batter's box and they had a banner up and it was like, you know, buy my beer, my next beer or something like that. And a QR code that linked to a cryptocurrency wallet or something, you know what I mean? Accepts <laughs> Bitcoin. And because he was standing behind the plate and it was all over television, I think the news said something like $12,000 of donations had poured into this this guy just sitting there holding a sign again it's is there an audience what am i asking that audience to do and how am i engaging with them he was getting it telecast all over the world you know who, whoever was watching the world series and people were scanning it and just buying him beers i guess you know it's a new it's a new gofundme that's funny right? buy my beer that's hilarious. And again, I think it's just if you're creative about what you're doing and how you're leveraging your tools, you'll be amazed at how, how much it expands your ability to engage with people. Just be um, sophisticated about it in, in, in some way, right? You, you obviously are looking for the right audience or the right customer. Don't go do things that are well outside of that you know, market space, you know? Yep. Well, because that's not going to work anyways. People are going to see right through it. Yeah, or they'll see the novelty to it and they'll get a chuckle. But at the end of the day, we want this to generate more revenue and more business for you, obviously. Right. Anything else? Anything Anything off topic that we have that anybody had for today? Any questions? 
University of Central Florida will be using QR codes on jerseys this year for a game or two. Really? That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Central Florida. Uh, it's my friend. No, Cindy Sun plays for for my, uh, what is it? U, UF, Florida. That's interesting. I wonder what, what are they going to link to? Do we know? It could be, you know, it would be cool if it was a player profile shuffle card. You know what I it mean? It's like, here's the player, here's their stats, here's all this stuff, here's where they went to high school, here's game film. Yeah, player bio stuff. You know, That's I could imagine so that. And then you have a unique QR code for every player. That's you know? awesome. I love, I've never even thought about that. I actually, one of my girlfriends, she, she's a shuffle user. Um, I didn't even think about it. Her son's um, out right now in the, um, potentially in the draft for the NFL. And then her, um, his twin is going to play for Florida. So that would have been funny to have him have a shuffle card um, for the, you know, his, um, what's it called? The guy, the, your representative to share. Mm. When's the next I, shuffle contract? We don't know yet, Shelly. I don't know. We did Dallas last year. Maybe we got to do Vegas or something, huh? <laughs> I don't Denver. know. I, I know Denver's in, yeah. Mm -hmm. Denver'd be fine too. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. I can tell you when I'll be there. Denver right. for Vegas, either way. <laughs> and actually Henderson's quite nice too. Yeah. I've been, it's like parents had a house 10 minutes from today. Vegas, right? So um parents for little league yeah i think mike was it you one time that said you were using cards for different people in sports i think you were making yeah you were making cards for different athletes yeah i think it's brilliant you know these girls um caitlin used to play uh select volleyball and you know you always have to go to all these tryouts how cool would it be to send something to a coach or to an owner before they even get there well, and I know Guy coached high school and, and college football a little bit, and even some of the kids that he had who were trying to get recruited by schools, you know, putting together things that might be their highlight reel and information about them and all of that type of stuff. So again, you're curating that stuff, and if you're not already actively being recruited, you could be sending that out to some of your schools of choice just to try and get information across. There's so many different ways, as we talk about on Tuesdays, to just leverage the solution because all we're really talking about is what is a landing page? It's a website, right? Or a web page. And what can you put on that? You can put anything under the sun that you'd like to talk about. So if we start thinking about it in terms of that, then we can start thinking about all the ways we can apply it. And since you know you have more than you know one card in your deck, within shuffle and you can add more and more and more, you can essentially be creating landing pages for anything under the sun that you wanna promote, right? The event, the product, the service, me, my child, et cetera, everything. And then you can send it. I mean, that's the other thing to me, right? You grab their information or you show them a QR code and you're not, you're, you're reducing the friction by not having them to go look up something. Oh. Yeah, just give I mean, it right. Just the thumb damage alone from typing in. I, I honestly think, Kathy, I've been thinking about this for some time, but when, when Guy talks about 90% of business cards getting thrown away, and I know everybody who goes to an event and collects a card from somebody has a good intention, yep. right? We made a connection. Let me grab your card. And then you get back and there's this force of friction that we all encounter when we look at that stack of five, 10, 100 cards that we just collected, and you're sitting there going, do I really want to start going through each of those and working them? And what do I want to do? Do I want to look up their email address? Okay, this is like 25 characters long. Now I got to type it in and I got to make sure I spelled it right and didn't screw it up. And then I got to go see if that I can find them an on interactive, Facebook. Yeah, right? you know, clicking thing and have more than just a, num a phone number or email address or a website, um, I, I think that just takes it to the next level. Yep, I agree. I'm excited to see, uh, to get groups together and start using the free card together and, and watching that, you know, energy of people sharing cards and having them in their deck and that kind of stuff. Exactly, exactly. So, all right, y'all. Well, y'all have been quiet today. I hope this was entertaining and, and interesting. And informative <laughs> um if you guys have any questions you know shoot them to us you can send them uh to me directly or send them to to um 
support and we'll get the I always go through and see what other questions are out there and what people are having trouble with and try and make sure that we're covering everything. Um, but if you all have anything, just let us know. We're happy to help. Happy to help. All right, y'all have a great week and happy shuffling. Right. Hey, everybody, <laughs> next call is Thursday, Mastermind. We're going to be focusing on the tools topic. So feel free to join us. That's 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Adjust for your time zone. Everything's on the week at a glance for that link. Uh, thanks again, Kathy, as always, for giving us some of your time and taking us through that. Look, if you guys don't have an email footer set up linking to your business card, you should now that you've been through this training. So take an opportunity to go out and decide which cards are you linking to which emails. So that way, every time you send an email, people have access to your information. Kathy, yep. thanks so much. We'll see everybody Absolutely. soon. Take care. Bye, everybody. Have Bye. a great week. Bye. Bye.